What's going on everybody? Jesse here. Today I'm going to teach you how you can use a library called Beautiful Soup to scrape data from a website and then I'm going to show you how to run that scraper every day on the cloud and send you the results either via a text message or an email. Um, so I'm going to show you how to set this up really quickly and give you a walkthrough. So just high level, here's your Python script and your flow. You set your program to run every day and then you're going to send the results via a text message. So I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch. OK, so now we have our empty program. And first thing I am going to do is drag in the Python module. Now there's two libraries we are going to have to import. So the first one is a library called requests. And the second one is a library called beautiful soup. So we're going to import those libraries. And I'll explain as we go along uh, what they're going to do. And what we're going to be scraping today is the market cap for Apple from Yahoo Finance. But the same functionality can be used to pull anything from this page or from any other stock page. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a variable called ticker and we'll just set it to Apple. And then we're going to grab the URL that we're going to want to pull data from. So as you can know, notice, Apple is already here, but I'm just going to delete it and add the ticker. So that way, if you ever want to change this ticker, it's easy to do so. So now what we need to do is actually pull the HTML from this web page into our Python script. And that's what we're going to use requests for. So we're going to say our result is going to equal requests.get our URL. And the HTML is going to be that result.txt. So we can print our HTML just so you can see what that looks like. And here you go. So now our HTML is on the page. So now what we need to do to scrape this data is we need to parse our way through this HTML to sort of get down to the data we care about. So that's what we're going to use beautiful soup for. So I'm going to create a variable called soup and I'm going to pass my HTML to beautiful soup. And what we're going to do now is we're going to scrape through and find what we need. So to do that, let's go into here and this is the number we care about. So we're going to inspect that HTML element. And this is sort of the area that we want to tell beautiful soup to get us to. So what we're kind of looking for is anything that might be like kind of unique in the HTML that's identifying the specific thing we're looking for. So in this case, I noticed that data slash test is assigned to market cap value. So that's likely something that's very specifically for that and not going to change. So the data test is assigned to that value. And then the type of tag is TD. So if you can see there's a TD here. So just keep both of those things in mind. I'm going to grab this value over here. So what we're going to say to beautiful soup is find us a TD tag where the value of data dash test is that value that we care about. And we'll set that to the variable. So we'll call that HTML of our element. So that's the element that we're going down to which is this element in the HTML. And now we want to actually pull the text. So we'll say our market cap is equal to the HTML element dot text. So let's print our market cap. And there it is. So our market cap has been printed. And just to make this even more clear, we can do our ticker market cap market cap neat so now we have the script that's pulling the apple market cap here and what we want to do is say now send us a daily email with this piece of information and have this run on the cloud so how are we going to do that what we want to do is output this market cap so we can bring it into a text message. So we're going to use the outputs dictionary and we can name our variable market cap and set it to that market cap value. And when I do that, you'll now notice that this market cap variable is available in my WayScript program. 
So then I can go into my library and grab, let's say, a text message. I could very easily also grab an email and say the market cap for Apple is market cap. And now, last piece is we want to set this to run every day. So we're going to add a time trigger. And we'll say run this every day at 9 a.m. and turn this on. So we can run this just to test it out and see how it works. And a text message has been sent. So I can pull in my phone and pull up that text message. Hopefully you can see that. So that is all working. So that's it. Hope that this was an instructive tutorial for you and I hope you like the content. Please subscribe if you wanna see more leave comments and ask questions. Please subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.